Hello, Mallory. I hope I said that right. <laughs> you did. You totally did. I'm like not at all good with my French accent, but thank you so much for being here on Awaken the Absolutely. Line. Absolutely. I met Mallory on TikTok and I was very, very comforted to watch her video about a question she was answering from a viewer, from somebody that follows you, I'm, I'm guessing, about what do the Akashic records say about the vaccination? And it was just such a relief that there are people out there who, who are speaking about this from the other side, because as I shared with you that I've heard a lot of the rhetoric on the other side, anti-maskers, anti-vaxxers, and this in no way are we trying to convince anybody. We, sure. ju we just want to share on the other flip, on the other side, if you do choose to get it or you're curious about it, um, I guess your own downloads from Akasha and from your guides about why it's beneficial or not beneficial to get the vaccine. So that's how I connected. I found you on Instagram and then I watched all of your coffee talk videos. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and, you. Yeah, it's just also interesting to hear how you channel. And um, anyway, it's super exciting to have you here. Before okay. we get started, though, can you just give us a little background of your origin story? Where sure. you from? When did you start realizing you had this gift? Um, OK, so a long time ago, I mean, my entire family is very psychic and has and has medium uh, mediumship abilities. My mother is a great medium. Uh, none of them work in, you know, none of them do this for a living, but they all have like, especially on my mother's side, all have um, a gift. And um, so I, and I grew up in that world. I grew up with like energy work um, and I grew up with my parents. I don't know if you've listened to some of my coffee talks, I talk about it in some of them where I grew up with my parents having seance in the living room next to my bedroom. And I didn't know what they were doing. And like every time it was every Thursday night, I remember. And then every time they were done with it, um, they thought they were done and whoever they had called upon will come into my room and I had to deal with it. And so um, I, I grew up with all of that. And then when I was, I don't know, I want to say probably around like 15 or 16, I kind of, you know, you just want to be like everybody else at that age. Mm -hmm. So I sort of like stopped and I would get in a lot of trouble is like with some of the things that I would know or see or not with my family, but with teachers or friends. And um, so I just thought, well, I don't want to be different. So then I kind of like stopped. And eventually it's like anything else. It's like a muscle, right? If you stop using it, it just doesn't come as easy. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really do much with it at all, even for God, like until I was in my late twenties. And then, um, I did a teacher's training, a yoga teacher's training, where um, the teacher that I had, her name is Anna Forrest, um, recognized right off the bat that there was something about me and then had an entire thing where um, she basically threw me back into that world in another very gentle way. I'm glad she did it. It could have been done very much like better than what it was. Um, and then it just was like reopening the floodgate, right? It was just like, it just came rushing back and all that being able to see energy and all the things that I could hear. And it took a long time for me to make sense of, of it all. Um, yeah. And so then for the past few years, you know, I've been kind of like a little more vocal about things uh, um, and, and kind of, I'm always like, before I outed myself, publicly online as a psychic and medium. I used to do that for my friends all the time, you know, just just randomly without even saying, oh, I'm gonna give you a reading, just kind of like helping them out. And um, my my partner, Holly, was eventually was like, honey, you got, there's gotta be some sort of exchange because you're becoming the two go-to person and there's just like, you're just getting drained. And I was just like, you're yeah, absolutely right. So this is when I was like, okay, you know, let's let me uh, put it out there and see, if people are interested in what I have and then they just took off from there. Mm. So it's, it's a nutshell of my, my, my story of where I come from, but yeah. So I don't know, feel free to ask any questions, but. And what is the difference between a psychic and a medium? 
Um, so, and I know you, this you it, answered this question in your. Yeah, no, it, it's actually a very good question. It's like, let me, let me make sure I, I, I always like, there's a very easy answer to this is like every psychic. Well, it's like, so being a psychic is like, you get information from spirit guides, right? You have, your intuition is really heightened. Um, and some psychics have mediumship abilities, mm -hmm. but not every medium is a psychic. Mm -hmm. so it's like being a psychic is being able to have a little bit of a foot into the future in some level and 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 there's very different sort of psychics there's um the way for me personally is that I tap into my spirit guides I tap into the Akashic records I um I read energy there's a lot of things that come into play but like people who have those gifts don't always see or hear spirits mm -hmm most often they do but the way for me the way my mediumship abilities are is like I see spirits that I have passed and the ones that I haven't mm -hmm. that just like haven't crossed over so I see both um so it's like the, the triple whammy I guess of, of the whole thing which can be very overwhelming at times um but yeah so this kind of like a little bit of the difference if that makes sense like mediums deal with the spirit world and the spirits that have crossed over and souls that are no longer in body. Psychic deals more, more with the human world and mm -hmm. the individuals into what their needs are. Like often it's, you know, people will come see me because they have questions about what's ahead of them, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So it's the, de dealing with the living versus dealing with the dead. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, so you're just in all the realms <laughs> in every dimension. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am. Um, yeah, it sounds like it's it's a little crazy in my head. I actually just posted something on Instagram today because people keep asking me that, like, so what happened when you close your eyes and when you feel like you're talking to someone? I'm like, oh my God, if you only knew, I wish somebody could take a picture of the inside of my head and then I could show you. So I was trying to explain like with words, I don't even know if I did it justice of like what happens in my brain when when people ask me questions, but so yeah but i remember one of your videos you said that everybody has the ability to be a psychic because yeah. i i believe that we are obviously multi-dimensional beings we're infinite souls in human form but you just said that not every medium could be a psychic or right um, that's correct yeah yeah so there's only a certain amount of people who have the capacity to tap into a mediumship to see souls who have crossed over. Yeah, I don't think it's as easy as becoming psychic. Like being a psychic, and I'm putting like being an intuitive underneath the being a psychic as well, because a lot of people have clairsentience. Mm -hmm. Most people are clairsentience and clairsentience is simply falls under mediumship, right? It's just the ability to sense what's happening around you and be in tune with the world around you. That's kind of like the defini uh, definition of clairsentience. So everybody has this ability to do that. All you have to do is be present within your body and be willing to kind of like absorb things, right? So this is why I say everybody has the ability to being a psychic. What people don't understand is like when they think of psychic, you know, they just think of like psychics in movies who are like, oh, you know, on August 28th at 3 p.m., this is going to happen. This is going to be terrible. Like this is not at all like Hollywood, right? It's not how... I mean, I, that's not how I get my information. Um, so this is why I always say like everybody has the ability to be a psychic. Mm -hmm. When it comes down to medium, it's very different. It's, um, I, I, yeah, I think it's like, it's almost like a gene. I really truly believe that if there was a DNA test that certain people are more predisposed to be able to see that. Because my, um, my niece is, at an age where she is no longer talking about it, but when she was young, she was just like talking about it all the time. I think I'll come back when she's older. She's only 20. She's going to be 20. Um, and then my mother is a really great medium. And then my um, great uncle was as well. So it's kind of like, it just has run in the family. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think also there's a, there's a, um, there's a part of fear, right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and be okay with, with, wanting and, and and okay with seeing those things because sometimes it's startling sometimes you're just like what the fuck yeah. like 
<laughs> you're just like, no, not now. <laughs> you know, it's like, so it's like, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's just, so it's not for everybody. Right. And, and I'm sure there are people who have that ability and who have not tapped into it mm-hmm. and don't want to, and, and good for them. Like, yeah. It's like, I'm not ready to quite see yet. (laughs) Right. And I think this is one of the reasons why sometimes people can connect easier to the people who have passed on versus the the spirit that I have not. Mm -hmm. Because there's a difference in the way they present themselves, right? The ones that I haven't crossed over yet can appear sometimes kind of like really, um, it's sort of like, sometimes it can be very startling, very scary. But the ones that have passed on, the way they show up, it's much more, um, it's gent- It's more gently, like gentler, and and it's more like they're like, you know, during the reading they'll be like floating to the side, and there's this gentle energy that comes with it, and they're like almost like pure translucent energy, mm-hmm. and so it's not scary at all. Versus a spirit that has not crossed over when they show up, they literally like like you look like you and I, mm-hmm. and, and you- that can be like what. The- what you said? Uh, a spirit that has not crossed over as in like they just left their physical body and not have crossed over to another dimension. Yeah. They said the one that I always said, the one that haven't crossed into the light. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Like or oh, another dimension, however you want to call it. Like those are the ones that often it's like they haven't had a funeral yet or they have chosen not to cross over for an amount of different reasons Mm -hmm. um and and they're still here like walking the earth realm Mm -hmm. and eventually when it's been a while they've been stuck here they get they can get very frustrated and this is one like yeah they can cause some issues let's put it this way and they're not as light they're a little dark no 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 it's not even that it's not that it's that's nothing to do with their light it's just like the way they present themselves they present it's like they are almost real mm. like you can tell that they're not but they 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 look like a normal like if, uh, somebody who cro- who leaves their body retains their personality completely mm-hmm. so if somebody was not a nice person when they leave their body and they haven't walked into the light yet they've had they're not pure soul just yet like they're still retaining the human qualities or not so good qualities wow. so I'm gonna keep going along with this because it's this so yeah go for it so go for it. in your experience like what is the common thread of why they haven't crossed over because they have like leftover business religion religion I know this is what okay so hold on caveat here this is what I have encountered it doesn't mean like I'm sure other mediums that are there will be like well that's not what I have great it's like I'm there's a hundreds of thousands of spirits that die every day so we all have plenty to see and and whatever um yeah you know the the most heartbreaking ones that I have encounters where um people who were raised very religious who did not follow the religion along as they got got older and when they pass you know, it's often like people when they get ready to pass, like have like a come to Jesus moment, you know, in some ways. Mm-hmm. Well, so so anyone like, right. So they had, they were raised in a very religious environment with fear of like, with like the concept of like heaven and hell. Mm-hmm. And they didn't stay within that religion. They cross over, they, they die, they haven't crossed over and they hold themselves back because they seem to be going to hell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so they, they, they don't want to go because they think literally they're going to go to hell. And they are going to have like eternal damnation. And that's heartbreaking. Right? Wow. Even at, so, that, even at that stage, they think that? Yes. Wow. Yeah. I, um, a, a, a few months back, probably about six months ago, I um, was with a client and her dad had just passed probably, I want to say, three months prior to that during COVID. I mean, he didn't have COVID. He died of something else. But... Um, and when, and her mother was not doing well, she was literally like still talking to the dad, like the dad was still there, like not really connecting to the fact that he had passed. And so she, she contacted me and, um, I was able to kind of like remotely see him in the, the room where he had passed and, and the whole thing and actually talked to him and, um, and, and understood that 
they were raised Mormon, no longer following the faith. Mm -hmm. And so there was that fear of, if I go, where am I going? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't follow what I was taught anymore. Mm -hmm. And so he was not crossing over. And also like he, he had a massive heart attack, which was very unexpected. So like he was not ready to go either. So there was two, like often people are just not ready to die. They're like, well, wait a minute. I was fine like five minutes ago, yeah. right? And now I'm not like, what the fuck? But when it comes down to, but it does happen very often. Like people get afraid of what they were taught and if they didn't follow their teachings, which is so maddening to me, but it happens very often. That's wild because that just goes to show how deep that programming is. Even at that yeah. stage, right? When you leave your it's body. It's very deep. I, I, was, I grew up in the Christian church, but I always, sure. uh, I was a little rebellious. I definitely mm-hmm. cherry picked the things that felt resonance to me and sure. the whole conversation around heaven or hell. And I, I was never really afraid of death because I knew that we just went back to God, back to source. Sure. One source. So it's just interesting to me how, you know, we both live in America. I'm American. I was raised here that so many people are afraid to talk about death even. Mm -hmm. And just that topic alone can cause so much anxiety and fear around people because they really don't know where they're going and they don't know. Right. It could be a 50 50 shot heaven or hell. Right. Right. And that's, that's so, that's so maddening to me. Like, to see it and and see those I mean what I have seen and and it's not I I wish I could tell you it was an isolated event but it's not Mm -hmm. it's very common I mean for what I've experienced and so when you're with the soul the spirit do you like tell them it's okay there's no hell yes I well no I don't I I yeah, I mean, yes and no. It's not like I, I'm trying to remember what I did with him. Um, yeah, it's just kind of like just trying to explain to them, like, it's okay, you know, you're not going to be punished for anything and trying to kind of like explain a little bit, but you can't, it's really hard to break that. Mm-hmm. It's really, really hard to break that. Um, it's really, in the, it, often if I can get the family engaged, into encouraging them to cross over then eventually they do um but it's like her dad eventually crossed over i had his daughter help me and then you know when she meant she told him but it's 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 fear yeah. it's just fear pure pure complete fear and i don't know i don't see past what's on the other side like if they haven't crossed over so i can't i mean i know there's no help but i can't like be like don't worry about it. Like, you know, I mean, even if I said that, like in it, and then they'll, they somewhat ask, you know, well, what's on the other side? And I'm like, you don't, well, yeah, I don't a hundred percent. know. I just know that you'll be received by your spirit guides. And then, you know, but after that, like, I, I honestly, like, I don't know what your journey is going to be like there. I so. also think that Our minds are so powerful, you know, we create our reality. So you can literally be alive in your physical body and create this as your heaven or hell, our human experience, you know? And it is so interesting though. Um, My mind is going to so many places. (laughs) I know, right? You're like a therapist for uh, wayward souls. (laughs) (laughs) How funny like it's gonna be okay and have you re- have you been connecting to more of those kinds of souls with the with the passing pandemic of- yeah uh no i honestly speaking it's like um like i don't see this is another thing it's like it's not like the movies where every five minutes there's a ghost that pops up like it's not <laughs> it's not like a daily instance right sometimes it doesn't happen for weeks at a hand at hand and it's more often um if somebody is asking me Mm -hmm. right then i'll be able to contact and then then i'll be like oh okay well they haven't crossed over this is what's going on right um but it's not like those spirits come to 
you know, to talk to me or anything like that, like just out of their own, like they wouldn't know I exist, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I've always had this assumption that because they want to communicate with the, their families or people that they knew on this plane and they know that you're open, that they would like come knocking on your door. So the fact that they don't sure. is because you protect yourself or you do like protection rituals. I do have that too. I, I, it's true that it's true too that I do have like the rules, which is like, unless you're inviting in, you're not welcome in. So that's a very strong rule that I have, um, which I, I haven't even thought about it in a long time. Um, and, and there are like, you know, spirits that just like you see crossing through or passing through and they'll like literally like just walk through, pause, look at you and then just keep going. Mm -hmm. That's more often than not, actually. Mm -hmm. that's, that's much more common. Yeah. And because, because spirits that like, they want to be like by their families or the places that they used to know. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Um, and, and the, the, the spirits, the, the, the hundreds of thousands of people who died from COVID. Um, yeah. I mean, when I had tuned into that, there has been like a mass exodus of like souls, definitely like leaving this earth and then just moving on. Um, I'm sure some of them have not crossed over. That's, I just haven't encountered anybody. I would really like to hear your theory on the mass exodus. Like, what do you think is going on? Um, what do you mean? Or have, exactly. or have you tapped into the spirit guides in Akasha about, you know, like the lesson in, in COVID and why so many souls have left this plane at the same time um a little bit i a little bit like of more for my own personal like information but um like the i i think it's 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 a little bit of like i don't even know how to explain it like some souls are just kind of like choosing to exit earlier because it's like you know we we are living in a very harsh world and it's just kind of like harder and harder and harder and harsher and harsher um but i haven't really like that's the information as far as the information i got like as it comes down to what's going on like we are really definitely being um tested right now like as as a, just as a species species like as human in general like it's just like okay which way do you want to go like is it going to be like a lot of division are you going to come together are you going to do what's right for one another or not and that's really kind of like the the test that's there for human beings right it's like with the vaccinations and the whole thing that we had talked about um that that's a big one and and timelines right it's just like i don't know if you saw i did like a few months back like a few months back i did like this video where i had literally felt like and i could only speak for the united states because it's what i felt into like literally we were at one point yes. and and we just completely stepped out out of our timeline yes. and it was just like holy fuck and it was just like you'll get one more chance to reconnect to where you are otherwise it's just like you go in a completely different different direction and um i was like okay and we we haven't we still we still not have we have not rejoined where we were before um so yeah but yeah to answer your question specifically about those souls that have exi exited like i don't know like i don't have i haven't actually really like sat down and try to really fully understand it mm -hmm. to to why is it there's different theories that i've heard people talk about it and i'm not sure i fully agree with all of them so and do you think that we're failing the first quiz of our test <laughs> no because you know it's just kind of we really truly just have like free will right i honestly really think that um did you ever see the, the TV show, The Good Place? Yes. Right. You know how like they get reset a thousand yes. million Is that times? What we're doing? I, I think we've been reset like so many times, so <laughs> many times. And then every time we get to almost 
auto destruction. They're like, all right, beep. <laughs> I really think we've been reset so many times. In the last year or in our entire? No, 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 no. In, in, not in the last year, like mm -hmm. in, in like hundreds of thousands of years, right? It's like we get to repeat everything over and over. And like we get to restart from scratch every time. Yeah. Like literally. So it's like, and every time I, I really strongly believe that human beings, like we're really not that smart. <laughs> and, and that we really are not. And I feel like we are presented with like rinse and repeat or evolve. And then we're just like, yeah, I'm going to try that again. <laughs> you know? It's just like, you're like, what? It just doesn't work that way. So, and also I do believe there are more and more people that are awakening mm -hmm. to, you know, um, we definitely have entered an age of, of a little more awakening. And, and I really believe that we are at a point where we have to realize that what I do to you, you know, has a ripple effect. And, and we can no longer consider ourselves just as individuals. Like everything we do affects everything. Mm -hmm. You see that through climate change. You see that through COVID. Like there are consequences to actions always. Yeah. Yeah, and after that, like it depends on on how you, what you choose. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a lot of Americans are failing that test, though, because America is built on independence and individualism and freedom and liberation. And depending on who you ask, that will mean something to different people. Sure. You know, you watch TikTok and you see the, these women shouting about wearing a mask, which is an infringement mm -hmm. on their freedom, right? It's the same word. You hear, you hear people talking about awakening to the 5D, somebody who's like a new age spiritualist, but then that means something different to like an indig indigenous person. So I feel like the concepts are all there, but we're not meeting in the same place of like what that's going to entail. Right. It's just like the idea. It, it, yeah. I, I mean, I have very strong opinions about this, <laughs> <It's> like, but <laughs> I would like to hear them. <laughs> well, no, I just, to me, I mean, as I've explained is like, I live by the concept of do no harm. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is why I'm like, let, let live people like let people live their lives. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's freedom of course, like, but I don't think like wearing Wearing a mask is a kindness to somebody who maybe is immunocompromised, who could get this and, and die from a horrible disease, right? And maybe not, maybe they'll get it and they won't have as much of a, a they'll just get a cold and be done with it. But there's a strong chance that they're not, maybe they can't get vaccinated. So I, like, it really blows my mind. To me, I'm just like, this is so insane. Mm -hmm. This is 100% insane. And it's like, if you, without really bringing into the political aspect of it, it, you also have the fact that people who don't want to get vaccinated right now are getting let go from their job at really, really mass, massive scale. Like it's happening like within the nursing facilities, hospitals, other businesses, and they're screaming like, oh, it's um, whatever an infringement of my freedom and the whole thing but it's not like we live in america and america is a um a, a the, the country is based on like freedom and also like business like have a right to do as they please right and so it's like you can't have it both mm -hmm. it's a capitalist country it's not a socialistic country mm -hmm. if you were in france it would be a very different story you in america it's a capitalist country, which means that businesses have a right to do whatever the fuck they want and the rules they want, mostly in their job. And so if they want to require full vaccinations for their employees, yes, I mean, it might feel horrible and it's not right, but they have the right to do that. You have the right not to get vaccinated. You 100% have the right to, but you, consequences, like actions have consequences. Yes. This is what, this is the biggest thing that I think as human beings we're encountering right now is to just becoming aware that our actions have consequences. And that's, that's a really big one. And you might not like the consequence, but that's the truth, right? I don't know. There's just so much like, to me, it's just so much madness, like insanity. It's just like you, I don't know, like people don't want, 
this this screaming that they're getting you know let go of their job and i feel it's it's terrible because they have families and they need to put food on the table like all of that i have compassion for it but there was a choice that they made yes. and they're saying well businesses shouldn't have the right to let me know what i should and should not do but in the meantime when a few years ago you have this like you know bakery who refused to bake a cake for a gay couple they were all like yeah well they're a business they get to do whatever they want yeah yeah you cannot fucking have it both ways yes. right yeah. so it's just kind of like so there's a lot going on like for me it's just that that's not even like on a spiritual level just on a plain human intelligence mm -hmm. that i'm just like baffled yes really um, baffled by by what's going on what did you say it's cognitive dissonance in psychology like um the reason why um, a lot of people don't want to get the vaccine I've heard is because of it not being, you know, um, by pharma, it's by pharma, like there's many, many reasons that they say, but then, but then those exact people will need those medications and hospitals to save their lives when they're sick. So it's a lot of like, cognitive dissonance, which is why I believe actually spiritual practice will help people to unify yeah. the mind and the heart and the body to have clear conscious thought so i'm actually wondering you know if these spiritual people are spiritual as they say and practicing these practices what are they practicing if they are if they are sharing things that are to me projections of their own fear personally that's what i feel um, sure and I'm just curious to hear your thoughts because you also tap into the Akashic Records and you're a psychic medium and the same people have downloads, I say that in air quotes, from spirit, from the galactic people that this is not right for our bodies. Right. Yes, that can be very, very confusing. And this is one of the things that... Um, where I like to, like, I try to be as grounded as, a, as grounded as I can and like not be so out there in my, like even the, the way I present things, I don't know. I mean, you've listened to my talks and stuff. I try to make it so that it's approachable to everyone, right? And like, so more like understanding and then that it's not such, um, like it's not vague vague and it's also not such the woo you know like the things that are just like so out there that only a certain amount of people can attain like no not at all like it's bullshit like my goal is to help everyone um i think a lot of it what's happening within the spiritual communities and and the people who have not you know who said they have those downloads maybe they have i don't know i don't know maybe I, i'm not going to say that what they have heard is not what they have heard um that's not what I have heard like when I tuned into the vaccine, like I was very clearly like presented with believing science. That was like my, what my guide said to me, this is not even our realm. Mm -hmm. Like you were given, you on earth, those knowledge, that knowledge was passed on for reasons. Mm -hmm. and, and it's to help human beings, mm -hmm. right? And so your body's fine. Like you can't take, and also it's like, it helped that I have a partner that's very, very brainy mm -hmm. and like has literally, when she says she's done her own research, she literally has read like peer review magazines, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like peer review articles. Like she's, she's delved right straight into it. She's all science. So between her and I, we were able to balance each other out. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, I don't even know how to explain it truthfully. It's, it's just, it, it, it's like, it's like using, okay, let me back up for a second. For example, when somebody is describing something, like let's say they have a course that they're doing or something, right? It's like, sometimes like you read those paragraphs and you go, I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, like using vocabularies that is just so not like, a layman's vocabulary, things that most person would not use. It's so out there mm -hmm. that most people right here are not going to be able to understand what it is that you're offering and they're not going to be able to understand like um, 
to they were able to relate mm-hmm. or maybe your course is great but since people don't understand what it is that you're trying to offer they're not going to be inclined to take it and get the benefit from it right so you got to you got to bring it back down and so i feel that there are times that you can be so plugged in and so up here that you're not grounded mm-hmm. and there needs to be a balance and i do think that like the spiritual community has approached this whole vaccination from up here mm-hmm. which is like all the different thousands of possibilities that develops in front of us every day, instead of a really truly like going from being grounded, mm-hmm. grounded and an earth-based human being right now, right? And so I feel like there needs to be a balance between both. Because if you really tune in from a grounded perspective, then it comes about like helping human race mm-hmm. and and relying on what all those spirits have given us which is all the scientists and the doctors and all those things right it's like they've been given to us for reasons not to poison us to help all that knowledge and so i don't believe that you know um like i don't know i would i would love to talk to somebody who has gotten those type of downloads and and hear where they got them from Mm -hmm. (laughs) right I no, I mean, I really, I can give you I, many uh, people that you can talk to that I've spoken to in the last year who I don't currently talk to anymore because I feel very strongly that 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 a lot of it is misinformation. And what you said actually really helped me to connect the dots because a lot of spiritual practitioners are all up in the higher, you know, chakras, the energy centers of you're not the body, the body's not you, we are not a body, right? But we are, you know, we Correct. Still have physical body, we're still embodied in this planet. And I think that's maybe where the illusion or the distortion is, is forgetting that piece. And listen, right. like, I get it, There, there's a lot of mistrust with our systems, with big pharma, and, you know, these institutions that are pretty toxic to us. But I got a similar download when I tapped into my Akashic records and I asked my ancestors and guides, they said, this is actually necessary for you to like live the way you want to live for your mental health as well. So like, it's not, it's not um, a matter of, for me personally, like I didn't necessarily feel like I had to because of I'm not a first line healthcare worker. I don't live in Mm -hmm. a a housing project with thousands of people. I have privilege. I have certain levels of access. Right. But at the same time, like what you were mentioning is my actions have repercussions for other people. Yeah, they do. Which is, I think something that people forget a lot when they're in the fear-based mindset. I actually don't think they forget they they fall into the well but it's not real and it's not going to it only it only affects one percent of the population let's say that's the number right when you think of the hundreds of thousands of people that are in this country one percent it's a lot of people you know and it's so yeah i don't know man it's just like it's been it's been baffling to me really really baffling and and it's just and i'm all about like opening conversations and talking until it becomes like so incredibly insane. I'm just like, I just can't. Like, if you're not going to be grounded in reality, I cannot have a conversation. Yeah. And and then also I'm very big, like if you are going to come at me with big words, like big pharma or deep state or whatever, like if I'm asked, like explain to me what you mean by those words, because often people don't even understand what those are. Mm-hmm. They're just repeating what they've heard. Mm-hmm. Right. And so it's just like, or like the one that I like, oh, I've done my own research. Really? Have you really done your own research? Because mm-hmm. you've, you've, you've read scientific magazine, you've read peer review articles, like you haven't really delved into it. You understand every single ingredient. Yeah. Like that would be doing your own research. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you really did your own research, then you will realize that maybe what you are putting in your toothpaste, then you put it on your teeth and your mouth every night is probably less safe than what they want to inject you with to try to help you feel better. Right. I mean, I'm exaggerating. Yes. I don't know what's in toothpaste, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's just like, I don't know. It's it's like, but it is also, it's like people have the right to make a choice. But what I'm saying is like, you have a right to make a choice. 
but be honest with accepting the consequences. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say something, it's going to feel, it's going to feel very, very controversial. But if somebody was to say to me, I'm choosing not to take this vaccination, and I know that my actions could result in somebody dying, but I really actually don't care. Mm-hmm. Why well, I'm going to be like, oh, dude, you're an asshole. I'm also going to have respect for that answer, yeah. right? I want to have respect for that answer because at least you are admitting that consequence to what you are choosing not to do. Yes. Is, is the one that are like, oh, no, I, I'm choosing not to do this, but people don't really die from it and it's all fake. And then mm-hmm. that I'm like, I have no respect for, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, yeah, you, you have the right to choose. You really do. But you cannot lie to yourself mm-hmm. about the fact that there are no consequences for your choice. They are. Right. And it doesn't mean you have to be a bad person. It just means that you have to be honest. Right. Yeah. So, I don't know. No, I agree. I feel the same exact way. And I think a lot of the rift between me and certain people that I knew was that they weren't taking ownership of their decision. Because right. all of a sudden, you know, I live in New York and New York City is mandating vaccinations for going inside the restaurants and for me personally i'm like that's capitalism new york city is the most capitalistic city in the whole world you don't think that they have the right to do that and a lot of my friends were like this is an infringement of my liberties and i'm like no it's not it's their business their choice like they don't want to put their staff at risk so again like this isn't a podcast about vax or no vax but i think what we're going to say is like own your decision and be honest with yourself absolutely a hundred percent it's like it's just consequences to everything right Mm -hmm. it's all there is like total totally 100 percent your choice but businesses also have a choice that's all yeah you know so yeah. with, your, with your psychic abilities and mediumship and your tapping into the Akashic records, is that something that you personally had to get like a mentorship or that you like studied? What are your thoughts about like studying these things versus like it's innately part of you and your gifts? But, so I did not study, but I believe in both. Right. So it's like, um, Maybe it's because of like, you know, I'm a Sagittarius and I don't know, we're just kind of like more like, let's just do it and see what happens. (laughs) Um, But I I didn't study because I've been, I've been having those gifts my entire life. And I didn't really tap into the Akashic record um, on my own for a very long time. It's only, it's recent actually. I mean, when I do my readings, I get my guides give me information from the Akashic record, but tapping into it on, on, on my own, I had never done. Mm-hmm. Until maybe, I don't know, maybe it was like eight, 10 months ago where I was literally told it's time. Mm-hmm. And then they took me through this whole like internal ceremony where I was given access to them, but I don't really access them very often because it just, I don't know, I just feel weird. But <laughs> it's just like, it just, it feels like, it's like with great power comes great responsibilities. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It feels like a little too much access, <laughs> um, you know? And so I'm just very careful, but that said, so it's just like, so I, I didn't study you now that I, it would not be something that I, it's, it's not me, but um, you know, some people like get a lot out of learning about doing something like they get a lot out of doing it you know i think what 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 happens and a lot is that people take a course in something because they're inclined to learn about it and i'm like that is wonderful what i don't agree with is people take a course about something because they're inclined to learn about it then they come out of it and said no i am going to be an akashic record reader (laughs) right and you're like no, you're not. Like, you, so it's just, it's just that's the part. Like, does that make sense? Yes. It's like if I went to hairdressing school, because let's say I want to learn how to cut hair and I'm going to go to hairdressing school, I can guarantee you I'm going to suck at it. I might learn, <laughs> I might learn very well how to cut hair, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, I think we can all learn how to do a basic cut and whatever, but am I really going to be ever really, really good and talented at it? Mm-hmm. 
yeah, no, I won't be. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like you have something. I do believe there's things that are like you're born with mm-hmm. that makes you like really good. And I think that you can learn, mm-hmm. you know, there's a little bit of both, I think. Yeah. But it's kind of like finding this balance and, and you know, I don't know. It, it Maybe I sound harsh, but no, I'm not trying to be. I'm very, just expressing. No, it's totally like an American thing here where spirituality has become, it's been colonized and then repackaged through capitalism where you can go to like a four week course on being a shaman and then all of a sudden you're a shaman. And it's like- Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly. That's actually really well put. <laughs> <That's exactly laughs> yeah. Well, I know it's been like a long time for you because you've been, you've been channeling and you've been doing this for so long, but I've just reawakened my gifts recently in the last two years since, you know, I was very open as a, as a kid. I saw, I saw things, I saw people, even like galactic beings. And part of this process is really trusting what's coming through. Right? Like sometimes I'll hear like clear audience, I'll hear something and I'll be like, what the heck is that? But then, I'll trust it and say it to the person and they'd be like, how did you know that? So how yeah. do you, how did you, or, or how do you cultivate that? Right. Because it's also discernment where it's like, is this really for me or is this for the other person? Sure. Um, I think it's like asking permission to ask, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like when you get information about someone, it's asking that person permission to say it. Mm-hmm. Because that's kind of like how, because sometimes they might not want to hear it, mm-hmm. right? And so then it's your job to, even if that information is that it's your job to hold it and not say it. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, I think that would be the discernment for me. If that is, I don't know if that's answering your question, but yeah. And I'll give you an example. Um, I was doing a reading with someone and her dad showed up. Mm -hmm. Now her dad had died of COVID Mm -hmm. um, earlier this year. And it was a few months after and her dad was there. So he had crossed over, everything was good. And I got this very strong feeling to ask her first if she wanted to hear from him. And her answer was no. Mm. Her answer was like, no. Wow. And so I had to tell him, sorry, dude come back another time because she wasn't ready because the pain was still too fresh and she didn't want whatever like I don't even know why really truthfully but um and then so at that point like I had to be respectful of her right Mm -hmm. so I think it's just kind of it's asking permission will asking permission frees you Mm -hmm. that's right I'm seeing so many different things behind you. <laughs> uh-huh. I told them uh, it's I'm just like, flying everywhere. I'm like, hello. <laughs> and uh, what are you seeing? Tell me. Well, I just saw coming from your right shoulder, like a white figure. Okay. Um, I don't know exactly what it is. I just saw it. Um, maybe I can ask later, but yeah. Uh- That's awesome. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Very yeah. Cool. And even before we hit record, I could still see it. I could, and I see auras. So I see like this sure. purple aura around you, which is really beautiful. Well, thank you. That's I awesome. mean, it makes sense, right? <laughs> Open crown. Um, sure. Well, is there anything that I didn't ask you that you wanted to share or anything that you wanted to, a message that you wanted to share with the world? I know it's a, big task so vague right I'm like Ooh. <laughs> um <laughs> no it, like I, you were lovely the, your questions were really right on um it's such an interesting time that we live in right and then and um I think like as it comes down to a message I would say it, you know and I actually that's I've said that many times in my videos and things is like never think that you are stuck on one path, right? Because I feel as people often, this they paralyze because they're afraid of making a mistake. Mm-hmm. 
and not being able to change that. Mm -hmm. But what I keep telling people all the time is you can always, always redirect the path you are on. Mm -hmm. So you don't be afraid of this is not the right path for me. Like take a step, it doesn't work, then take a step on the right instead of going forward, right? It's just like, it, it, there's such fear of judgment from our spirit guides and, and doing the wrong thing, quote unquote, that many people are just like stopped. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want to encourage anybody that listens to that to, you know, do the thing that you've wanted to do for a very long time, but you are afraid of doing, see where it goes, mm -hmm. you know, because it's like, yeah, and then and also, you know, it and for anybody else that's out there and, and wants to do what I do and what you do or anything like that, like come from a place of being grounded. Mm -hmm. Don't just focus on here, focus on down here. That's the most important thing because you have to be grounded to be able to receive and be like a really clear conduit, right? Mm -hmm. And and be able to help the people that you talk to because we are human beings, we are like in a human flesh. Yes. And we're dealing with like bills and sadness and happiness and heartbreaks and the whole thing. And those are human condition, right? Mm -hmm. And so to, if you are trying to become a psychic or a medium or anything like that, you want to relate to people on a human level, not just coming from so much like out there that there's no connection. Does that make sense? Yes. You actually have a beautiful video. I think it's on your IGTV where you help people. Um, I think one of the questions you were answering was how can people connect to spirit or ancestors? Mm. I forget which one it was. And the first thing you said was that you have to be grounded because you have to be a clear conduit for them to come yeah. through. And um, yeah, I, I really encourage everybody to follow Mallory on Thank Instagram him. and TikTok because you, you give so much advice and wisdom. I feel like I'm in your mediumship. Uh, I'm like <laughs> your apprentice here on oh, Thank you. That's awesome. But can I just That's say, awesome. you are just such a humble, and I just got goosebumps, such a humble and, and like beautiful soul. You have such a reverence for like all the realms but especially our own human experience and there's a resonance there that feels so grounded and safe and and it's you're just such a gem i don't know how else thank to you I, I really really I, I appreciate it that's actually really kind to hear thank you yeah and and i'm really glad that you picked up on the grounded stuff like if i had that's really that it's great because it's it means that my message is coming across like it's so important because yeah and I was just thinking of that like yeah if you're grounded but also when you're grounded you're leaving room to actually also be able to tune into the heart mm -hmm. right the energy moves up mm -hmm. it's harder to bring it down like if you're just up here so it's like the heart like you have to tune into the heart to be able to tune into people mm -hmm. so I don't know I love that um, yeah but thank you and and if anybody you know and if I don't know if I can tell people like I do readings, they yes. welcome to go to my website. So you give yeah, it's a, I do I do psychic guidance readings, and I call them psychic guidance is because um, this is really what it is. It's like I tune into your soul's path, and mm -hmm. then we see which one is much better. It's better for you, or much likely to happen, or where you are at, and then I answer people's questions basically. I love that. Into well, I will, what's going on for them? Yeah, I will link everything in the show notes so that you can contact. Larry, uh, Mallory and please, please follow her she's amazing thank you so much you're very welcome thank you thank you thank you I appreciate all of you